Hey there one, Spazzy Dragon here, the spazziest of dragons even, and welcome to this little tutorial video. Before I start, a huge thanks to Tom, who made this video possible, who donated a quite sizable amount of credits and saved me the trouble of trading and mining and gave me, basically he gave me the chance, uh, he gave me the free time to actually make this video, and, you know, kudos, Tom. So, today's background music, the 90s mix, and uh, we are going to talk about the hidden aspect of roleplay, the subtle little hints, and other stuff. So yeah. Um, you know, it's very hard to be a new player on Discovery Freelancer. Like, the overall attitude is, is really different from a, a lot of other games, right? And uh, a lot of new players are new not only to the mod itself, but also the concept of roleplay. Like, not a lot of people know what roleplay is, have so, uh, neither they have been like exposed to roleplay from other sources. Um, a lot of people who join Discovery Freelancer are just fans of the original Freelancer game, and they just notice the Discovery Freelancer server happens to be one of the more active ones that are left. So, the whole roleplay thing that our community and the mod is based around of is really just secondary, you know, interest to these people. But those of you who really do want to get better at roleplay and want to kind of learn the subtle aspects about it, this video is going to be dedicated to you. And uh, we are going to actually do a fair bit of work today as I'm going to guide you through, like, pretty much to all of the things that I personally think makes for a good roleplay quality and basically I'm just going to show you how to better better yourself uh, step by step from starting a new player to roleplaying on an existing character be it old, new, be it a snubcraft or even a battleship. So here we are at the character creation screen. So anyone who has played games like Skyrim or whatever, they know how it how hard it is to develop your first character to usually you know, usually the choice is visualization, but also some sort of background if the game allows. In Freelancer's case, you can do that after you create the character, but there's a few things that new players tend to mistake, and uh, one of them is the name of the character. Um, technically, there are two ways on how to go around this. Um, basically, you either name your character properly as a first name and a last name, or maybe some initials here and there, you know, depending on your own choice. Uh, I actually use the random name generator a lot, you can google it up, and I'm going to link it in the description of this video as well. Um, the second idea is to use some sort of, quote, code name or uh, ship name. But that itself actually caused a lot of problems, and one of the biggest mistakes that people make, uh, a lot of new players make, is use the names of existing characters. Like, if you watch some of my older videos, I already said, if you're new to the concept of roleplay, then uh, maybe pick a character that you know by heart, maybe from a movie or something else, and try to roleplay that person, because you already know what they would do in that sort of situation. But uh, some people take it a little bit too far, and they start naming the player after this, like the character itself, after the character they want to play, so... You know, some people might call their characters Morpheus, and I probably, you know, wrote that name wrong. Or if they want to name their uh, ship after a call sign, they might go after the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, or some sort of um, more subtle reference. See, subtle references work, but they do kind of stand out for people who know, uh, maybe if they have read that book or watched that very old movie, and, you know, it's it's not that hard to see. Um, I myself happen to watch a lot of anime, for example, and if I see people starting naming their ships or characters after anime names, it really sticks out, and it really kind of gives that vibe off that the person is not really taking this thing too seriously. And since roleplay pretty much needs to be based on immersion, then you sort of have these problems. So tip number one, 
make sure that you name your character properly. Use a random name generator, that's one. Or secondly, use some sort of, you know, code name that does not really reflect some sort of existing lore, for example, a movie or a book or something else, right? Um, that would be the first one. Now, obviously, there are other choices, and some people have made some characters that do really fit their intended role, even though that it's not from the Freelancer universe. For example, we did have a pirate named the Joker, and say what you want, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have seen Dark uh, Knight Rises, and, um, you know, my hat's off to this player, he knew how to play this character very well, and it wasn't necessarily a straight rip-off, but, you know, it was original in its own way, but, you know, it's one of those characters, it's one of those people who can actually pl play their character so well that even though they took the name out of a existing movie or other sort of franchise, their character ended up being very deserving of that name. So, for the purposes of this particular tutorial, let's uh, name our uh, character Roland Granson, just for the sake of example. The second tip is actually not that simple. For example, when you start off as a new player, then obviously, as you already saw from my Let's Plays maybe, uh, you already know that uh, you sort of need to start acquiring massive amounts of credits so you can you know, create proper characters and start exploring the, the Discovery Universe. But the thing is, your ship itself and the behavior you do kind of, let's move up a little bit so this player doesn't ram into us, uh, kind of shows what sort of attitude you have. So, for example, if you are flying a Liberty Navy, um, some sort of Liberty Navy fighter, and you, you're role-playing a part of the Liberty Navy, for example, but you're using some sort of very low-tech weapons or very cheap armor upgrades, I do realize this is not really that fair towards the player, especially if it's a new player and they're using some sort of very cheap armor upgrade, but it sort of shows n maybe not the quality of your chosen roleplay, but how much effort you want to put in your character. So this is maybe a tip that not everyone at their point of their you know current progress in Discovery Freelancer can do, but the more effort you show that you put in your character, the better. So, if you're, if you happen to fly a very, you know, sort of outdated ship, you sort of have to make up for it. You might, you, you might want to make sure that people know that, you know, if you're using a bad armor upgrade, maybe, you know, just for the sake of example. Uh, speaking as a veteran player, I sort of associate low-tech ships with, you know, new players, which is not bad, but then... Uh, kind of ex experience kind of shows that new players don't really put too much effort into roleplay because they don't know what sort of effort is needed. You know, they're new to the server, they don't know how seriously we take... Is this a proper roleplaying server, or maybe this is a relaxed roleplay server, and, you know, that sort of answer... Uh, that answer sort of <laughs> depends on who you ask these days, but uh, my point still stands. This is actually another thing I want to bring up. Uh, let's restart beginner for the sake of argument, you know. Um, if you're a new player and you have experience in roleplay, you know, you already know what roleplay is, you've done forum roleplay, chat roleplay, etc, etc, then uh, do not be afraid to jump in and provide the best quality roleplay and interaction you can't, even though that maybe your ship is not very good. For example, we just restarted as beginner, and obviously we have uh, this little thing, like, like this little bug. It's the Sunburst Freighter. So obviously this is a newbie starter ship, but it doesn't mean that just because you're a newbie player, it doesn't mean that you're somehow restricted to roleplay or uh, somehow, you know, are, are supposed to give less of it. No, of course not. Find someone. Find find a bigger, more experienced roleplay, uh, sorry, player. Maybe go find someone who's uh, flying a faction tag role, but just go up to him and start roleplaying. It might be a very good surprise for them to see a completely, you know, 
low tech player, low, you know, new ish player to um, sort of roleplay with him like that. It's it's a comfortable little feeling, and you know, you might start making a name for yourself. The server is not large. We are currently capped at 120 players online at the same time, so it's very easy to make a name for yourself. Good and bad. So if you provide a good sort of roleplay even when you're very new to the server, it's going to pay off in the long run, especially you keep that character around after you gain something better, you know, uh, pretty much like that. So after this, um, what else can I say? The way you talk is very important. Um, I, I realize that this is something that not a lot of people actually do, like not not really a lot of vets do this, but in my opinion nothing degrades the expectation you have from the other player you're role playing with if they do not use proper grammar pronunciation. Uh, punctuation, sorry. Uh, you can't really do pronunciation since there's no voice chat, but you know what I mean. Uh, there's a difference between a person talking um, by using, you know, the capitalized letters when they're mean to be, you know, when they're using proper commas, when they... Basically, the more you show that you want to put effort into roleplay, the more people will want to roleplay you, uh, with you. So, that would be my next tip, like, make sure that your roleplay quality is dependent not only what you say, but how you say it. Obviously, this is not something anyone can do. Uh, for example, when I myself started Discovery Freelancer, even though I had some experience from previous roleplay sites, my overall English dictionary wasn't really that good, so I had some troubles uh, formulating a lot of questions. And obviously, I actually kind of ignored a lot of the things that I'm talking about now, you know, uh, proper pronunciation, uh, uh, capitalization of, uh, you know, the words and, you know, stuff like that, but um, overall it grew on to me, and you know, it's it, in a way you kind of develop your own sort of level of roleplay that you sort of expect from yourself, that you're saying, I'm a good role player. I should be able to give that sort of roleplay, you know, that sort of level of roleplay, and uh, at the same time, uh, for example, let's let's look at this uh, Eros Angel. So obviously, I'm a new player. Um, Ronald Gre reigns an uh, First of all, he sees that I might be a good player because I named the ship properly. It's a first name, last name. Fair enough. I'm also rank 25, but even though I'm a low rank, nothing stops me from saying, hmm, greetings there. I can't say I've seen such a transponder before. Bionis Diaz Lancer. Oh, see? I'm uh, typing. In a proper English, I'm uh, capitalizing, I'm using punctuation, and uh, see, this this player is a part of an official faction, a very rare official faction by that, and he's role-playing bad. Uh, it's very uh, rare to see us here. Ah, so I see. Well, do tell me, uh, Reaper? You know, I'm not, I don't know what, what's your story? So... Basically, as long as, even though you are a new player, as long as you can sort of give off the vibe that uh, you're here for the roleplay, that you know what roleplay is, and you're, uh, most importantly, you are willing to provide effort for your roleplay, you are gonna get roleplay back. My story? Can you elaborate it? Well, as you said, there aren't many of uh, your affiliation flying around. I was just curious of who you are. That's all. I see, uh, a player's passing by. He sees uh, us roleplaying. He's gonna roleplay as well. Greetings there, OSI. Now, obviously, he's not gonna stick around for long. It's a traitor, but there you go. See, roleplay provides roleplay, and do not do not listen to anyone who says, Oh, New York, for example, is a very bad system for new players because there's not a lot of roleplay. People have, you know, a lot more relaxed... Exp no! People have expectations. They're just waiting to see who has enough effort. Show people that you have, you know, you have the will that you, you want to put some effort into the roleplay. That you want to give them a quality, fun interaction. And they're gonna 
you know, give you the same back. We're from the deep Omicrons and Omegas. We're trying to establish peace in Omicrons and defeat. Uh, that's one of the things. Uh, Freelancer has this sort of limited amount of, you know, text you can put in, but... And defeat Coalition Arrival Soul. Uh, I see. Well, to be quite honest, I've never been out to the Edge Worlds before. Heard it would take a bit more financial stability than the one I have now. You know, gear and such. Do tell, is it really that dangerous out there? You know, keep the, just keep the interaction going. That's pretty much it. And, um, for example, uh, tip number whatever, five? I lost track. If I was sitting in a ship that I was using a code name or ship name on, then maybe I would give a subtle hint that my captain's name is Roland, so I would just go something along the lines of Roland's and, you know, just add an extra line like this and then type whatever. And, uh, that's pretty much... That's a sort of a unwritten rule for capital ships captains, but I'm gonna make a, s a separate uh, tutorial about capital ships and such. Liberty is speed garden compared to the edge worlds. Uh, I don't know about that. Just yesterday I got myself into a fight between the locals and a rather huge Heart fleet cruisers and battleships and such. Well, this is roleplay. This is basically, um, you know, idle chatter like this is kind of good, but you sort of want to keep the other player invested. They, you sort of want to keep them interested in, um, you know, talking to you. So I mean, it might be not—it it might not be that interesting to talk to some 20 rank 25 guy in New York, but apparently this player is just chilling outside of New York Station. So obviously, that's—it's it, not like he, they're actually doing something. So this sort of idle chatter is always welcome. How to say it? In the Edge Worlds, everyone is trying to kill everyone. Well, ain't that the truth? I mean, we are technic. Holy civilians with and all of us happen to have permits for high grade weaponry. Space tends to be quite dangerous, but I suppose that the edge worlds might be even more so kind of scary when you think about it. Ah, see, I hit the... I hit the thing about it. And I'm just gonna amend that. Corsairs, Hessians, Nomads, Wild, Outcast, the Core, the Order, and Coalition, Mollies, and whatnot, trying to be a dominant group there. Well, what are they fighting over more or less is it valuable you know speaking as a gun for hire and all human speech detecting what the hell okay so this player is trying to do ai stuff or maybe some sort of um robotic non-human sort of thing um, see, this is something that I already told you. Uh, he has an armor upgrade 4, and I can't help it. As a veteran player, I, I'm sort of inclined to believe that he's not really taking things too seriously. Like, if, the, if they had enough money to actually buy the uh, artificial intelligence core vessel, then they should have gotten more than enough money to actually buy some armor. 
or only thing unexplored systems offer. See? We're talking, we're role-playing here, and people are flying in and just joining in the role-play. It's that easy. Don't believe anyone who says that, oh, you know, there's no role-play to be had. No, as long as you give the chance of interaction, you're going to get interaction. So, I suppose that's pretty much all you need to know, like, the, ve the very basics. I was very lucky that, to have uh, the Reaper of Sirius here. Like, this guy actually helped me a lot just to show what roleplay is and what it means to be on the server, you know. Um, I suppose we might as well just stop the video here for now, and uh, I'm gonna do a separate one for, um, say, traders about pirate interaction and such, and maybe a separate one for a capital ship as well. But for now, this was Pansy Dragon, AK Syndromes. Uh, kudos to the players involved, and uh, I'll see you guys later.